These age cohort models that we are looking at are simple, linear, dynamical systems. They have a single equilibrium at the origin, and that is not so interesting. But if we examine the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of these linear systems, interesting things come out. So let's do some linear algebra. Let's take that Leslie model that we looked at and reduce it down to the simple case where the survival rates are all equal to 1. This gives us a matrix A of the following form. We have constants along the first row, R1, R2, R3, all the way up through Rk. That last column is full of zeros after the Rk, and then the remaining k-1 by k-1 block is going to be the identity matrix, representing survival to the next age cohort over time. Now, let's analyze this as an exercise. You can show that this matrix has, as its characteristic polynomial, lambda to the k minus the sum, as i goes from 1 to k, of r sub i times lambda to the k minus i all equal to zero. Now, all you gotta do is solve for lambda, but that's not so easy. There's gonna be k roots to this characteristic polynomial, and what are we gonna do with them? What do they look like? Here is the important result. Lemma. This system has a strictly positive dominant eigenvalue. Let's call that guy lambda star. And this has an eigenvector associated with it whose entries are all strictly positive. Now that's a really important result. There's a little bit of fine print. Let's assume for simplicity that all of these reproduction rates, these r sub i values, are all strictly positive. Okay, so we've got that. How do you prove something like this? We need a dominant eigenvalue. That means it's bigger than all the other eigenvalues in modulus, since this is a discrete time system. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that characteristic polynomial, divide by lambda to the k, and we get the following equation. 1 equals the sum i goes from 1 to k of r sub i divided by lambda to the i. Now this is a special type of equation. This is sometimes called an Euler-Lotka equation. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the right-hand side of this equation, just call this f of lambda, some function of this variable lambda, and we're going to examine where this function attains the value of 1. Now one can show famous last words one can show. One can show that if you take this function of lambda, the sum i goes from 1 to k, r sub i, divided by lambda to the i, set that guy equal to 1, one can show the following three things. First of all, f is blowing up. It's going to positive infinity as lambda is going to 0 from the right. 2. f is going to 0 as lambda goes to positive infinity. 3. It's going to take a little bit of work, but please show that the derivative of f with respect to lambda is negative for all lambda, real, and positive. And that means that what we have is this monotonically decreasing function that is a continuous function that goes from a very, very large value when lambda is small to a very, very small value when lambda is large. That means that the graph of this function crosses the horizontal line where it attains the value of 1. And it does so at a unique point. This point is going to be our dominant eigenvalue, lambda star. Now the hard part is to show that all the other solutions to the characteristic polynomial, all the other roots, lambda, which have to be of the form some constant a times e to the plus or minus i theta. These are going to be complex roots, or maybe negative real roots. But if we represent them in this form, then we have to have this modulus a being strictly less than this positive real root lambda star. Now, I'm not going to show this. Can you show this? Yes, you can. What you're going to have to do is expand out these complex roots in terms of their real and imaginary parts using the Euler formula. 
from that Euler formula, you're going to see that all of the real components have to cancel out. You're going to use the fact that this cosine of theta is always going to be strictly less than 1, and then you're going to do some work. Have fun. Now here's the important part about this dominance. We have this lambda star, this dominant eigenvalue for this matrix. What is the eigenvector associated with it? Of course it's not unique, but what we really want is an eigenvector that has all of its entries positive. So since we can rescale the eigenvector to be anything we want, let's hope that the first entry is positive, and let's rescale that first entry to be 1. What are the other entries? I claim that the eigenvector for this dominant eigenvalue lambda star, v star, has the components 1, then lambda star to the negative 1, then lambda star to the negative 2, all the way down the line to lambda star to the power 1 minus k. How do I get this? The way that I get this is I use the characteristic polynomial. Since the sum i goes from 1 to k of r sub i divided by lambda star to the i is equal to 1. If I take that equation, multiply through by lambda star, then that 1 turns into lambda star, and then that sum turns into r1, plus r2 divided by lambda star, plus r3 divided by lambda star squared, etc., etc. If you take this putative dominant eigenvector, hit it with that matrix, then that first row of r sub i's is giving you this exact formula. And you can see that this is, in fact, an eigenvector for this matrix with this dominant eigenvalue, lambda star. And that's really important. Why? Why is this so significant? Because as the population evolves, it's going to tend to a fixed distribution. Remember how dominance works in a dynamical system like this, in a linear dynamical system. Everything tends to some multiple of the dominant eigenvalue to the nth power times the dominant eigenvector. So p sub n is tending to this dominant eigen mode. And that means that over time, the population distribution looks like this positive dominant eigenvector, v star. You can see exactly how the population distribution spreads over the different age cohorts. Everything depends on the value of this dominant eigenvalue, lambda star. If lambda star is less than 1, then that means your population is dying off over time. You're taking powers of lambda star. Everything's getting smaller and smaller. But if you look at how your age cohorts are distributed, there's a smaller population in the younger age cohorts and relatively larger populations in the older age cohorts. If lambda star is equal to 1, then everything is perfectly balanced, and you're in stasis. But if lambda star is bigger than 1, then your population is growing over time, and you can see how the younger age cohorts have more and more population, and the older age cohorts less so. Now this is all cool, but what if we go back to the original model with survival rates? Well, if we denote by sigma i the product of the first i survival rates, that net survival rate, then this system also has a dominant eigenvalue, lambda star, with a dominant eigenvector with all terms positive. We're just rescaling each term by these net survival rates, sigma i. And this is going to be the eventual population distribution in this full Leslie model. That's a very, very nice, albeit somewhat complicated analysis. And what we see is that even linear dynamics hold some really interesting properties.